Jill Halverson is founder and director of the Women's Center of Los Angeles, which has done much pioneer work on behalf of homeless women since opening five years ago. She served in the Peace Corps in India during the 1960s and later worked for 10 years with alcoholics in the Skid Row area of Los Angeles. What about you, Jill? Did you encounter that kind of uh, skepticism on the parts of people when you started to work in Los Angeles County? Yes. Um, about saying, people in Los Angeles County about, knew yeah. about the men because the men's missions had been in, in Skid the Row. Skid Row area for many years. But people were generally shocked to learn that women lived there and that have lived there for 25, 30 years, many mm -hmm. of them on the street. Um, and now in, in Los Angeles, it's not just Skid Row. Like Orange County, there are pockets of homeless throughout the L.A. area, including Beverly Hills and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. and, Santa Monica and Venice. So I think people are beginning to believe that it exists because it's happening in their neighborhoods and they're seeing the people now. How do you measure success in what you do? How do you measure success in working with homeless women from, let's say, point A where they first come to you and point B where they leave? Well, I have real small expectations for success and for change because when I look at my own life, I know how slowly I change and how difficult it is for me to change. But if I see someone who was dirty when they came in, leave clean, in, in nice clothing with their hair washed. Um, Thinking better about themselves. Yes, feeling better about themselves. There's one young woman I serve right now who wouldn't eat with her plate on the table. She's so withdrawn, she would sit with her back to the other people at the table. Mm -hmm. She now, after about five months, sits with her plate on the table. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is success, and it might not be to someone else. What does it do when they uh, bathe, when they have new clothes, when they can maybe get their hair fixed, maybe do something? changes a lot of the bizarre behavior, interestingly enough. I think when, mm -hmm. when you look good and feel good about yourself, you act differently, behave differently. You allow other people to enter your life and, and to interact with them. We really try to get people cleaned up and looking good immediately. Mm -hmm. That's a first step. It too. pays. It pays. Yeah. Uh -huh. What advice would you say to us trying to do what you've done and maybe avoid some of the pitfalls that you've had to cross over? Well, I think that the support is out there. I, I think the first thing you have to do is raise people's consciousness. And, um, and when you do that, people really are willing to help. You and found that? Yes. Uh -huh. They'll I, come forth. It, they're willing to do hands-on mm -hmm. kind of work with the poor, and that might be cooking, it might be washing dishes, it might be visiting with people, it might be... We have a lawyer who comes, comes in and does free legal services, free. a psychologist who comes in and runs group therapy, a hairdresser mm -hmm. who comes in and cuts hair. The people are out there and willing to help us, I'm convinced. We have to be able to channel their skills to meet our needs. Um, Jill, share with us some of the things that you do. We, uh, I've asked for some of the pictures of this extraordinary. Yeah. They were shown at this uh, coalition meeting that you said that have to do with your place. Tell us about this, Jill. Well, we're in an old storefront building, and I've kind of set it up like a that's home. That's where this is. This is the dining area. We serve meals uh -huh. to 30 to 50 women each day, seven days a week. And they, um, share, in the, they share in the operation. They management. help cook. They do all the dishes. They help do the cleaning. Um, this is the library. We have lots of books and magazines. Do they, do they care about the books? Do yes. It's, it? it's been uh, a project getting people to read, but those who live in the crummy little Skid Row hotels don't have a television or, or a radio, so or to take to home a book, a book. Is, is, is wonderful. Our center is staffed with volunteers also. Here are some of our volunteers in the kitchen preparing the meal for the day. The volunteers come from all over the L.A. area. You have a shortage of volunteers or all you need? No, we're in pretty good shape with volunteers. This is another um, picture of the dining area. You can see that the women sit at small four-person tables so that they can interact with, with mm -hmm. other women at lunch. Um, we serve very nice food. We have lots of friends who come in and join us for lunch, as well as the ladies. Um, this is one of my favorite women at the Women's Center. Her name is Carrie, picture. and she's known as the crochet lady. She crochets all of that clothing. <laughs> She lived on the street corner of 8th and Wall for 15 years on an upside-down pail with a shopping cart. Where would she sleep at night? She slept on a pail that she turned upside down and she put a plastic tarp over her. She's 69 years old. And is she now, does she now have housing? She now has housing. We, we took her to Social Security and, and helped her get her Social Security started. And she still wears red crochet, but she lives in a little hotel and, and uh, comes to see us once a week. Uh, what's your biggest dream? We have a few seconds left. What's the biggest dream you'd wish for this problem? Housing. 